Hello and welcome back. This is part two of sliding table saws. And of course, be sure to check out part one, yeah? Hello, hello. So what I have here is a Fritz Franz jig. They're designed for sliders. Maybe you know what a Fritz Franz jig is. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. Fritz Franz, I believe front back. Anyway, this one's designed by my buddy, David Bedrosian. Let me show you more. Fantastic, I got everything assembled and set up and yeah, you're gonna laugh, but I even had some leftover conversion varnish. So I went ahead and put conversion varnish on these and I used a strip of phenolic for this guide and I used screws and I was able to tap threads in that phenolic to hold that in place. There is zero slack on that. And I like phenolic because it is extremely stable. So let me grab a chunk of this. Phenolic is, well, it's basically like a big, thick chunk of Formica. <laughs> See that? It's just uh, resins and compressed and heat to create this plastic-like hard very stable material. So anyway, that's what I used for for the runners that go in this groove slot. And then these dudes, these this is a really fantastic idea. So these are the zero clearance. So as this thing gets used, the main part would eventually wear a little bit with vibration or a bigger blade and you'll lose your zero clearance. So Dave designed with this piece to move in and out with the wrench, he even has magnets here to keep the wrench. So as this zero clearance wears a little bit, you can just keep on moving it in. It's a beautiful design, the best I've seen. And so now to calibrate it, per Dave's instructions, which are really simple, straightforward, and very effective, you take a, a one, two, four block, one, two, three block, whatever you have. This is calibrated to be exactly four inches. I actually checked it with a mic and you'll put this right up to the blade ever so gently. Bring this up to it. And these stops are beautiful. I mean, there is zero play on that thing. I've already calibrated the front one. And so with that four inch block against there, I've moved that right up to it. And now I can make an adjustment on this cursor to read. Well, four inches precisely. How simple and beautiful is that design? Absolutely love it. And so the idea with the Fritz Franz is when you're making a cut, of course you can have these out of the way, and you would just sandwich your piece between the Fritz Franz and make your cut. Super safe way to hold especially small pieces. And when I say small, I mean, you could hold something really small. You bring this here. And even if you want something tapered, you could set these at a different setting, a different measurement. But this one's reading inch and uh, six, what is that? Inch and five sixteenths. So I could put this one at inch and five sixteenths. Boom. Very cool, right? Absolutely beautiful, brilliant design. The Fritz Franz jig, made by this dude, <laughs> David Bedrosian. Thanks a ton, buddy. So here's a great example of using the Fritz Franz jig. Say you're cutting something tapered, right? And so I've got this marked wider on this end, and I don't know if that shows up, but narrower on this end. somewhere there and I've transferred that down vertically. So we'll line this front one up. We've got a vertical line on the end. Bring the stop over. Get that close, I guess. Boom, something like that. Bring this dude over and since this is zero clearance, here at this edge, I can bring that right where that goes. Then bring the stop over, lock that down. That's awesome, right? And if you have a, a 
hold down. If it's a narrow piece like this, you probably want to use a hold down. Something like that. You are ready to make that cut. Beautiful. Oh, incidentally, if you're doing tapers on a table saw, you should always make the tailing end, this, this end, uh, fatter on the fall off piece so that that doesn't get wedged into the saw blade as you're making the cut, especially if it goes to a taper or to a sliver, right? So yeah, Fritz and Franz jig. This one's by, this design is by David Bedrosian. It is a brilliant design. The absolute best I've seen. I'll leave a link to his Instagram account in the description. Now, I get asked a lot via Instagram DMs if you can rip with a slider. Well, sure, you can. I occasionally use my slider to rip lumber, but they're really ideal for cross-cutting and for sheet goods. And the capacity on this particular K3, it is about 78 inches of rip capacity with the cross-cut fence in place. However, the cross-cut fence can be easily removed and you can, of course, rip much longer material. Yep, I routinely cut 4x8 sheets with this saw. Here you can see I'm using the cross-cut part of the saw and then moving the fence forward, the rip fence forward, I can make that same cut and all my pieces are exactly the same. Or another way, again, using the cross-cut part of the saw, making all these pieces, cutting all these pieces, they're all the same, then utilizing the scale on the crosscut fence, turn that piece around, boom. Beautiful, just like that. Now, some people put the slider fence in front of the work or closest to you. I prefer it on the other side. Pros and cons to each approach and whatever you get used to is probably what you're gonna like. Probably the reason people like it close, the fence closer to you is because a piece of work seems more captured, but really a lot depends on how you grab the board. Here you can see my thumb on the left side pushes that against the fence. My right hand controls the work and I just repeatedly feed that board into the saw making each repetitive cut. And then of course finally pushing the last few pieces through safely with a push stick. And here I'm gonna show you something, and this is completely choice. You can see the push stick. To me, there's a little bit of play there, a little bit of slack, it's another connection. I feel safe just pushing that piece through. It's probably about five inches wide. You're plenty far enough away from the blade, a good grip, and nothing's going to happen. Ultimately, you have to make that call. Remember, if you're not comfortable doing it, don't do it. It's simple. Here, more cross-cut pieces being made, and I want to reiterate the importance of pulling that fence back so you don't capture a piece between the fence and the blade. And I wanted to show you a simple way to back up a piece to make that end, end of the cut splinter-free. Fantastic. Now, I've added this extension, uh, sometimes called a butt bar, Right, and you can see just how effective that is. It just rides against your upper leg or your butt. My saw is elevated a couple of inches, so that's where it hits me. But it just makes it easy, and you can just rock back and forth making your cuts. So a question I get asked a lot is about the configuration of my table saws. So of course, here's the slider. And on the opposite corner is a 10 inch table saw. From the front of this blade, or whichever one you'd like to call the front, from this side of the blade, I have about 16 feet, and of this end, I have another 16 feet. So I can easily make long rips. Typically, this is used for sheet goods and mostly five foot by five foot Baltic birch. 10 inch table saw over here, I've got an easy 21 feet in front of it and about 10 or 11 feet from the blade to the door. Of course, I can open the door and rip long material. From the blade to the wall, I have a little over four feet, um, but from the blade to all my junk, maybe about three feet, but I typically don't cut anything larger than that. And if I do, I can use this guy. 
So it's a really good setup. The outfeed table is five foot wide and eight feet long. And of course, router table on this corner with um, T-slots where I can use an auxiliary fence or I can use the table saw fence, but usually I use the auxiliary fence because it has good vacuum. But yeah, that's the, that's the setup. It works uh, fantastically well. It's a kind of a large footprint in a small space, but I'm used to large outfeed tables. It just makes, it just makes handling sheets much easier. What I've got going here are some two degree cuts on each side of these pieces. These will make up the front piece of my domino docks. And of course I start by making a trim cut at two degrees. And I wanted to show off that even tiny little pieces won't get wedged in the blade thanks to my zero clearance inserts. I'll show those in a bit. So of course I've got my auxiliary fence set at two degrees and I just simply make a cut, flip, and keep on doing that. Nice clean cuts on both faces. And there's a good shot of the domino dock with the two degree cuts on each edge. And inevitably, I'll get somebody saying that my fingers are too close as I'm making these cuts. I like the piece held down securely. And if you have any vibration in a piece when you're making a cut, that is when you're going to get a kickback or have a, a mishap. So again, if you're not comfortable doing something, simply don't do it. This works for me and has been for 40 plus years. All right, now here's something that's a little bit interesting. I'm making these cuts these are going to be zero clearance inserts and I'll show you these in a minute, but I'm making a cut and then I'm flipping the board over, right? And I make a cut. So essentially what I'm creating is a board up on the top. It has one edge that is super clean and one edge that is chipped. The reason I'm doing that is because yes, I could use a scoring blade. However, Phenolic or plastic laminate is brutal on a scoring blade and it'll just dull it in no time. So by doing it like this, I can eliminate using a scoring blade and I'll show you why here in the next clip. All right, check it out. On this face, that edge or corner is chipped, but it'll get eliminated. When I flip it over, this opposite corner is chipped and that will also get eliminated, which means I was able to eliminate using the scoring blade. It was a fantastic discovery. All right, here's my zero clearance insert in action. These tiny little pieces that I'm creating, those would normally get jammed between the throat plate and the blade or flung back at you. And there's a full 11 sixteenths or about 17 and a half millimeters to the left of the blade, which makes my zero clearance inserts very strong. They're constructed with Baltic birch, covered with Formica on both sides, utilizing epoxy, which makes them extremely strong and far superior to the factory inserts. I will leave a link in the description, yeah? And incidentally, my zero clearance inserts will fit several hammer models and several Felder models. I'll leave that information in the description as well. Oh, and by the way, this K3 winner, it's what I would call an entry level. I get a lot of questions about that. It has a small footprint, which is why I liked it. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed these couple of videos. Thank you tons for watching. And remember, click, like, subscribe, learn.